Welcome to the Mormons and Pornography video. So there was a BYU study and it showed of 192 male BYU students between the ages of 18 and 27, 35% reported having used pornography in the past 12 months. I think that number is very low. Okay, according to a survey in Psychology Today magazine, 73% of women and 98% of men reported internet porn use in the last six months. 98% of men in the last six months. For porn use within the last week, the numbers are lower, 80% of men and 26% of women. So I think that 35% for BYU students is very low. And for Mormon men, the rate is somewhere between 35 and 98%. So everybody knows that the most common thing to do when you're looking at internet porn is to masturbate. Well, according to the Journal of the American Medical Association, uh, masturbation prevalence, males at age 14 years old, 62.6% reported masturbating, while 72.7% of 15-year-olds reported masturbating, 78% of 16-year-olds, and 80% of 17-year-olds reported ever having masturbated. So that 35%, I'm sure, is very low. Uh, it could go up all the way up to 80% or 98% for porn and for masturbation. The other reason I think it's very low is because a lot of people are going to lie on the surveys, especially BYU students on a BYU survey. In one study, they showed that 36% of men and 22% of women lied about having masturbated. So if that's the case, it could be in the high 90s or almost 100%. And the reason that those numbers are so high is because sex is a physiological need. If you look at uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, on the very bottom are the physiological needs. Those are the most important things to get. Air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, and reproduction or sex. So it's, it's a b very fundamental need. It's a need that has to be met. So a lot of general authorities in the Mormon church say that pornography is very addictive, super addictive. According to the scientific literature, that's not true. In the Wikipedia pornography article, it says, while some literature reviews suggest that pornography images and films can be addictive, insufficient evidence exist to draw conclusions and another article in wikipedia pornography addiction talks about the diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders the dsm-5 and it says neither the dsm-5 nor the icd-11 classify pornography as a mental disorder or an addiction so that there is no classification in these manuals for pornography addiction all right, so in the same article, Pornography Addiction, it says, in a representative sample study of those who watch pornographic videos, only 1.2% of women agreed with the statement, I am addicted to porn. Only 1.2% said that I am addicted to porn, and only 4.4% of men said that they thought they were addicted to porn. So it's very low. It's not a scientific classification that is pornography addiction. And these estimates are high due to the screening process. So, for instance, they didn't screen out a very religious people that might say that they're addicted to porn if they watch it once a month or something. So in 2017, BYU released another study. It used data gathered online from nearly 700 unmarried English-speaking adults on the, on the effects of religiosity on perceptions of porn addictiveness and relationship anxiety. So how does your religion affect your perception of porn addictiveness? The results of the study showed that seeing oneself as addicted to porn generated far more anxiety and shame-related negative outcomes individually and in romantic relationships than any potential negative effect of consuming sexually explicit material. So the anxiety and shame that they, that they experienced was worse than any negative effects that, from the porn directly. 
Additionally, individuals reporting higher religiosity were more likely to consider themselves addicted to porn regardless of their comparative usage rate. So like a Mormon that masturbates and, and uses porn once a month or once a week, and because the general authorities say that they're addicted, starts to believe that they're actually addicted when they're only using porn once a week. But there is such a thing as excessive pornographic viewing. They don't classify it as an addiction, but there are some problems with that, of course. Some of these problems are depression, isolation, decreased productivity, not getting enough work done, not enough time interacting with real people. So those are all real problems, but the same could be said of video games or social media. You know, you, you're, you, get, you get isolated, you have a decrease in productivity, you spend too much time on video games and interacting on social media, and not enough time with real people. That's going to lead to depression. So another thing that the Mormon general authorities say is that porn use leads to more rape in society and more sexual violence. Well, there's actually quite a few studies that indicate the opposite. And this is in the same article in Wikipedia. It says several studies conclude that the liberalization of porn in society may be associated with decreased rape and decreased sexual violence rates while others suggest that there is no effect or are inconclusive. So shame is an unpleasant self-conscious emotion typically associated with a negative evaluation of the self. So if you listen to the general authorities and then you use porn and masturbate, you're going to have a lot of shame. You're going to see why as we go through the general authorities' accounts in general conference, you're going to see what the kind of crazy things they say about porn, uh, but this is associated with uh, withdrawal motivations and feelings of distress. So this is shamed, feelings of distress, exposure, mistrust, powerlessness, and worthlessness. So your self-esteem, if you're believing these general authorities, your feelings of worthlessness, all gonna go up. So you have to decide what the problem is. Is it the porn, is it the masturbation? Or is it your beliefs about those things? Uh, this is from the Wikipedia shame article. So we know that sex is a basic physiological need. And when you repress that, it can cause some pretty serious problems. Sexual repression is a state in which a person is prevented from expressing their own sexuality. And when you're prevented from expressing a basic physiological need, it's going to bring problems into your life. Uh, sexual repression is often associated with feelings of guilt or shame being associated with sexual impulses. So here's an example of how the Mormon pornography shame cycle works. First, you have a trigger event, so you get exposed to pornography. You have a natural physiological response to the trigger or to the porn, which brings pleasure and a reward of chemicals released. Then you have shame due to the natural response and you think something in your head like I am bad because I liked it. Then you have an anxiety spike due to the shame. Stress chemicals are released. You have the thought, how can I live with myself? I'm disgusting and unworthy. So you, you're believing what the general authorities are saying. And then you have self-medication to cope with the anxiety. So you crave more pleasure. Uh, you want the pleasure chemicals to replace the stress chemicals. So what do you do to get that pleasure? You go back to the trigger event again, uh, the pornography exposure, and then you receive the natural physiological response again, which is pleasure. And then it goes around and around and around. When you experience a lot of guilt and shame and a lot of sexual repression, your use of Internet porn and masturbation will actually go up. Uh, there was a nationwide study of paid porn subscriptions. It showed that predominantly LDS state of Utah had the highest subscription rate of any state for paid porn subscriptions. Utah is number one for online pornography consumption. Salt Lake Tribune. Another thing the general authorities say is that having sex or looking at porn and masturbating is a choice. Well, if it's on the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's a basic physiological need. 
Uh, it's more of a need than a choice, although your choice can override your needs. Uh, this just says, having sex is taking care of a biological need. It's not a choice, it's a need. And George Michael said that sex is natural, sex is fun, sex is best one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, some advantages of watching porn online and masturbating instead of having real sex. Well, there's no sexually transmitted diseases. You're simply in the comfort of your own home. You're not going to get herpes, gonorrhea, or HIV. It's the safest sex you can have, basically. Uh, there's no unwanted pregnancies, which can be a problem. No abortions. No need for contraception. It's a good outlet if you're single and you don't have a companion or partner to have sex with. And your heart won't get broken. Ha, ha, ha. All right, so let's enter the wild and wacky world of the Mormon General Authority's views on pornography. This is on the church's own website. The LDS Church teaches that pornography is any material depicting or describing the human body, pretty broad, or sexual conduct in a way that arouses sexual feelings. Any material that arouses sexual feelings. That's very broad. It could be a romance novel. could be a TV show with people kissing. Wow, that's broad. Uh, it, it is as harmful to the spirit as tobacco, alcohol, and drugs are to the body. So bad for the spirit. Overcoming pornography. How to stop a porn addiction and get help. They're going to use that word addiction a lot. All right, the first account from a general authority. We're going to go back to 1959 in General Conference. All of these statements are from General Conference in this video. This is the Apostle Ezra Taft Benson. He went on to become the prophet of the church. And Benson calls pornography a poison, filth, depraved, vile, muck, smut, trash, an infection, dirty, organized crime, vicious, a menace, a danger, character-destroying, and evil. Benson compares pornography to, to narcotics. He compares pornography to narcotics and alcohol. So it's just as bad as cocaine, right? Benson says that authorities have observed on a repeated occasion that the obscenity racket or porn is a prime contributor to the increase in juvenile delinquency. That's not true. And then he lists uh, gangs. It, it, it contributes to the increase in gangs, major crimes, and rape. Not true. He says a dirty book or a filthy picture may be the trigger that sets off a terrible crime. Our children, our wives, our friends may be the horrified victims of criminals who are triggered by obscene materials. And here we have a picture of Ezra Taft Benson. Okay, so we jump about seven or eight years to 1967. The Apostle Spencer W. Kimball. Kimball says that sex thoughts and sex discussions... Passionate kissing, pornography, masturbation, and necking, which is just kissing, lead to adultery, perversion, petting, and sex looseness. So just having a sex thought, wow, that is hard to control. Or having a sex discussion. So like sex ed, I noticed that they, they really put down sexual education in these general conference uh, sessions as well. So don't have a thought about it. Don't discuss it. Don't kiss. Don't masturbate. Or you're going to be a pervert. Pornography will destroy like a parasite, leaving the person dead and barren. And here we have a picture of Spencer W. Kimball. Okay, the Apostle Marky Peterson, 1967. He says that pornography in films and on the printed page leads to immorality and sexually transmitted diseases. When in actuality, looking at porn and masturbating is the safest sex you can have. There are no sexually transmitted diseases when you do that. 
Okay, another weird and wacky statement. This is from the presiding bishopric uh, member, Victor L. Brown in 1970. A normal 12 or 13-year-old boy or girl exposed to pornographic literature could develop into a homosexual. All right, so what is Satan trying to do with all this porn? The Apostle Ezra Taft Benson tells us in 1970, Benson says that Satan is trying to destroy the family unit through pornography. All right, pornography will destroy your civilization. According to the Apostle Gordon B. Hinckley, 1970, Pornography leads to decay and a dying civilizations. These civilizations are poisoned by their own moral sickness. Okay, the For the Strength of Youth pamphlet. This is the 1972 edition. Youth should rigidly and energetically resist at all times unclean stories, jokes, reading or, pr or printed matter, salacious films, objectionable TV programs, immodest or degrading advertising, and immoral material in any form. Takes all the fun out of life. Such materials is an affront to right living and clean thinking. You don't want to have sexual thoughts. And must be rejected wherever one comes in contact with it in social experiences, in entertainment, or in school. Youth must assert themselves in making choices and demanding only that which is uplifting. And here is what the cover looked like for the 1972 edition. All right, so let's remember that when these general authorities use these descriptors, they're simply describing sex. Once you become married in the temple, all of these words get reversed. And you're supposed to switch them in your mind. And then sex becomes fine, wholesome, and moral. But in the meantime, if you do any of it, it's like the worst thing that you can do. So just remember, though, these, these descriptors are simply describing sex. You could have people in the missionary position, even with some clothes on, having sex. And they would use these descriptors to describe the act. <clears throat> so... This is uh, Robert L. Simpson in General Conference 1972. Simpson calls pornography filth, mind-polluting, destructive, degrading, smut, a perversion, unnatural, trash, damaging, and insidious. Simpson compares pornography to alcohol and illegal drugs. Yep, porn is just as bad as heroin, kids. And he says it is just as addicting as illegal drugs. Porn is just as addictive as heroin and cocaine. Simpson says that pornography leads to anger, bad language, lying, and every negative part of your character will be enhanced. I don't think those things are true. Your personality will be diminished. Family relationships will be impaired. You won't be able to pray as much. Your testimony of the truth will start to slip away and your senses will become numbed. He quotes the prophet Harold B. Lee in saying that nations have fallen because of licentiousness and pornography. Yes, your nation will fall and become destroyed because of pornography. And here's a picture of Robert L. Simpson. All right, one of the more extreme examples here, the prophet Spencer W. Kimball. He's a prophet now in 1974. Kimball calls pornography garbage, a pollutant. It's worse than global warming, kids. It's filthy, it's ugly, it's without redeeming value, and it's degenerate. Kimball says that pornography leads to perversions and murder. Yep, you heard it here first. Pornography will lead you to murder people. It'll cause you to rob people, commit robbery, rape people. It will lead you to prostitution and vice. Okay, and two years later, the prophet Spencer W. Kimball is still at it. 
Kimball calls pornography a plague. It's like the Black Plague. It's an insidious enemy of humanity, kind of like the commies. It is smut, degrading, an abomination. It corrodes the mind, snuffs out self-esteem, causes anguish and unhappiness. Maybe it's your words that cause low self-esteem, Spencer. Your beliefs and words. And he calls it a sin. He says that pornography leads to abortions. How can having safe sex in your own home lead to an abortion? And here's another picture of Spencer W. Kimball, the prophet. Okay, the Apostle N. Eldon Tanner, also in the First Presidency, General Conference 1976. Tanner says that pornography leads to perversions and rape. Not true. A actually, the opposite is probably true. Okay, so we have the Apostle Marvin J. Ashton, 1977. Remember, these uh, words that he uses here are, are just words to describe sex. Sex before marriage. Sex with people in pornography. Sex when you're having masturbation with yourself. Okay, so Ashton says pornography is an infestation that can have terrifying destructive consequences it's kind of like nuclear nuclear war he calls pornography lurid evil awful defiling perverted impairs or impairing corrupt distorts infects poisons yep it's like rat poison to the soul warps spoils it's carnal and impure just Simply dis descriptors of sex, people. Ashton says that pornography makes people unable to relate to others in a normal, healthy way. It dulls the senses. The person becomes desensitized and is unable to react in a sensitive, caring, responsible manner. Not true. <laughs> I have experience to explain the opposite. He says that spirit must withdraw and we, be we become unable to sense or feel right from wrong. So if you look at porn, you won't be able to tell right from wrong anymore, kids. And here is a picture from Marvin J. Ashton. All right, so if you believe these guys, and they're still saying stuff like this in 2019 in General Conference, you will have guilt and shame, and you will be sexually repressed. Read up about those things. They're not good for you. Anyway, Apostle Thomas S. Monson. This is before he was prophet. He's an apostle. Thomas S. Monson, 1979. Monson calls pornography sinister, diabolical, a disease, pernicious, an infection, a contaminant, Smut, deadly, a destroyer, contagious. It's contagious. It'll rub off on other people. It's addicting. Not true. Devilish, a taint. It's filthy. It's a vice. It's a blight. Insidious. Did they already say that one? Sin, evil. It's arsenic. It's arsenic and strychnine to the soul. Maybe to the body, too. And a malady. Monson says that pornography is mafia spawned. Well, if you look at Playboy magazine and Hustler magazine and Penthouse, those are not mafia spawned. I don't know what other ones he's talking about. In 79, I think that was probably the most common. And then they had VHS tapes as well. He intimates that pornography leads to rape and other child-related sexual offenses child abuse, or maybe molestation. He says that pornography decays and kills civilizations. And here we have the Apostle Thomas S. Monson went on to become prophet of the church. All right, so one thing to remember is that a very high percentage of men and boys look at porn and masturbate. So when we, when we are looking at all these general authorities, 
you got to think that a fairly high percentage of them all did this kind of stuff. Like when they were teenagers and even as men looked at porn and masturbated. But they probably justified it in their mind because they repented. Now they're, now they're like 80 and 90 years old and their sex drive has gone down. Anyway, this is the Apostle Gordon B. Hinckley, 1983. He was also in the first presidency at the time. He says that pornography is a plague, smut, it's warped, it's filth, and evil. Hinckley, Hinckley says that porn will destroy your marriage, it'll make you lose self-respect, and will break your spouse's heart. All right, so if you believe all this stuff, you're going to have a lot of guilt and shame, unfortunately. The shame cycle. That's one of the reasons I'm making this video, is to help people to not believe this anymore, to get out of that shame and guilt cycle. This is from the Apostle David B. Haight, General Conference 1984. Haight calls pornography evil, a plague, devastating, shocking, smut, corruption, debauchery, a contaminant. It desensitizes, it's degrading, ugly, filth, sewer filth. So there's a new one. It's not just filth, it's sewer filth. It's awful. It's an ominous insult. It's a deadly evil. One of the most deadly that Satan has to offer. And it is, it is insidious. Hate says that 90% of all pornography is dominated by organized crime. I find that hard to believe. Pornography is addictive. No, it's not. A victim of pornography became a slave to carnal thoughts and actions. You don't want to become a slave. States, well, like Utah, that have the highest readership of pornographic magazines also have the highest number of reported rapes. That's been proven to be false. Hate intimates that pornography leads to child abuse, such as incest. And here we have the apostle David B. Hate. Okay, so now we have the For the Strength of Youth pamphlet 1990. They keep ramping it up more and more in, in these pamphlets, in these editions. Pornography in all forms is especially dangerous and addictive. No, it's not. It's not addictive. Curious exploration of pornography can become a controlling habit. Leading to coarser material. That may be true. It may lead to coarser material over time. And to sexual transgression. Which according to the Mormons would simply be masturbation. If you continue to view pornography, your spirit will become desensitized and your conscience will erode. And maybe you won't be able to tell right from wrong anymore. Much harm comes from reading or viewing pornography. So reading a romance novel, as so many women like to do, is that especially dangerous? Super destructive, just reading a romance novel. It causes thoughts within you that weaken your self-discipline. Okay, and here is the cover for the 1990 edition of For the Strength of Youth pamphlet. All right, Gordon B. Hinckley, still an apostle. He went on to become the prophet. 1992, Hinckley says that pornography is destructive, an affliction, degrading a foul disease. It's like a foul disease that you can catch, like HIV. And it's rot. He compares pornography to alcohol and illegal drugs. Is it just as destructive and addictive as cocaine and heroin? No. Okay, the Apostle Neil A. Maxwell, 1992. A little pornography may not only lead to child and spouse abuse. It doesn't. But it slowly sucks out the marrow of self-esteem. So you have to think that if you believe this rhetoric, you're going to have a lot of guilt and shame and sexual, sexual repression but only for a very high percentage of your entire congregation, especially of boys. It's 
probably 80 to 90 percent of boys and men are doing this. So you're, you're really just causing a massive wave of unnecessary sexual repression, <clears throat> sexual repression and guilt and shame. And you are fighting a losing battle. You are fighting against biology. So the prophet Gordon B. Hinckley in General Conference 1998, now he's the prophet. He calls pornography a stain, a filth, disease, destructive, addictive, no, a taint, ugly, and corrosive. Hinckley asks, would any girl in her right mind ever wish to marry a young man who is addicted to pornography? You know, because if, wa- if he's watching it once a week, he's addicted. What girl would ever want to be married to somebody like that? Although in, pr- in actuality, probably 90% of Mormon girls and women are <laughs> married to somebody like that. Okay, the fire and brimstone of Apostle Richard G. Scott. At least on pornography, he's pretty fire and brimstone. General Conference, year 2000 now. Scott says that pornography is a damning influence. Damning influence. It's vicious, corroding, destructive, immoral, abhorrent, lurid, and evil. Scott says that pornography is overpoweringly addictive. That's like heroin. Overpoweringly addictive. It's not. And severely damaging. It is a potent tool of Lucifer one of the favorite tools that Satan slash Lucifer uses according to the general authorities if you believe in Satan it degrades the mind the heart and the soul your mind your heart and your soul not the body he calls it unbridled selfishness you could also just call it a physiological need and here is the apostle Richard G. Scott Okay, the For the Strength of Youth pamphlet, 2001. They keep ramping up the rhetoric every year on this pamphlet or whenever it's released. The general authorities seem like they're trying to outdo each other. It's like a, like a duel to see who can say the most fire and brimstone statements on pornography. Satan uses pornography to deceive you by making what is wrong and evil look normal and exciting. Well, sex is natural and normal. It can mislead you into thinking that everybody is doing things that are wrong. Well, we know that's a high percentage that are looking at porn and masturbating. Now you have to decide if that's wrong. Pornography in all of its forms is especially dangerous and addictive. They love that word. What may begin as a curious indulgence can become a destructive habit that will take control of your life. It can lead you to sexual transgression and even criminal behavior. You can become a criminal by looking at porn. Well, it's a wonder that 90% of the population is not in jail. Pornography is a poison that weakens your self-control changes the way that you see others, causes you to lose the guidance of the spirit, and can even affect your ability to have a normal relationship, (coughs) excuse me, can affect your ability to have a normal relationship with your future spouse. If you encounter pornography, turn away from it immediately. Okay, and here is the cover of the Strength for Youth pamphlet, 2001. All right, so the Prophet Gordon B. Hinckley again. It's one of his favorite topics, pornography. General Conference, 2004. Hinckley says that pornography is a sin, devilish, evil, sleazy, the mire, smut, filthy, dross, an addiction, vice, an evil monster. An evil monster, that's serious and a vicious stain. Hinckley says that pornography is a raging storm which destroys individuals and families, utterly ruining what was once wholesome. 
he quotes from a letter quotes from a letter from a woman who says her husband's use of pornography made her contemplate suicide <clears throat> so there you go pornography pornography can lead to suicide especially if you believe these general authorities she says that pornography has the effect of damaging hearts and souls to their very depth strangling the life out of relationships hurting to the very core those that you that those that you should love the most hinkley says and he's the prophet all who are involved in pornography become victims continued exposure leads to addiction they love to say it's an addiction that is almost impossible to break continued exposure leads to addiction that is almost impossible to break it's like heroin you got to go to rehab it leads to fantasies that are that are destructive of self-respect it leads to illicit relationships adultery often to disease and to abusive criminal activity oh really oh and he also said that porn leads to the loss of the effectiveness of your priesthood that's pretty serious if you're a male mormon and your priesthood has no effectiveness all your blessings and baptisms don't have the authority of god to act in god's name but anyway here is the prophet gordon b hinckley all right the apostle joseph b worthlin general conference 2004 porn is a plague it's like the black plague killing millions and millions of souls pornography brings a vicious wake of immorality broken homes and broken lives vicious wake of immorality it will sap your spiritual strength to endure and it is a severe danger it's like a nuclear winter a little bit of fire and brimstone here from the Apostle Dallin H. Oaks, General Conference 2005. Oaks calls pornography a danger, corrupting, evil, a stain, filth, or as my dad used to like to say, absolute filth, perverted, sin, a moral degradation. Pornography does permanent harm to your brain. Bullshit. <laughs> permanent harm no way he says those who seek out and use porn forfeit the power of their priesthood that's serious for a mormon kid a boy or man forfeit the power of your priesthood so anything you do with that priesthood has no efficacy that would seem weird people that were baptized really weren't baptized people that were blessed really weren't blessed somebody that marries you in the temple that looked at porn the day before doesn't have the power to really marry you in the temple uh, you will lose the companionship of the spirit that's also serious for a mormon pornography impairs one's ability to enjoy a normal emotional romantic and spiritual relationship with a person of the opposite sex it impairs that ability pornography is also addictive it impairs your decision-making capacities. Can't make good decisions anymore. Pornography viewers lose their spiritual protection and are subject to the power and direction of the devil. That's harsh. And are deeply soiled by sin. Young women, I like this part, young women who dress immodestly become pornography to some of the men who see them so just by the way a woman dresses she can become pornography out in public to men who see her crazy eh and here we have the apostle dallin h oaks kind of a fire and brimstone face all right we have another one from the apostle thomas s monson 2006 he's also in the first presidency at this point Monson says that pornography is a vice, is vicious, it's lewd, filthy, destructive, foul sleaze, and tainted. And you will become all those things if you look at it, right? 
He says that pornography will desensitize the spirit and erode the conscience. All right, the prophet Gordon B. Hinckley again. It's now 2006. Hinckley says that pornography easily becomes an addiction of the worst kind. Of the worst kind, the very worst? More than heroin? Okay, the Apostle Richard G. Scott again, 2009 now. These are all general conference. That's when doctrine gets put forth across the pulpit for Mormons. Porn is vicious, corroding, destructive, abhorrent, a tragedy, evil, and a grievous sin. Fire and brimstone. Porn causes great grief, suffering, heartache, and destroys marriages. It is one of the most damning influences on earth. I can think of worse things. World War II, global warming, genocide, black plague, AIDS. <laughs> Porn is overpoweringly addictive. Porn is overpoweringly addictive. Not true. There's not even a medical classification for porn addiction. It degrades the mind and the heart and the soul. He, and Scott considers porn unbridled selfishness. Self-abuse. All right. And here is the Apostle Richard G. Scott again. All right. For the Strength of Youth pamphlet 2011 now. It seems like they ramp this up even a little more. Pornography in all forms is especially dangerous and addictive. What may begin as an unexpected exposure or a curious exploration can become a destructive habit. Use of pornography is a serious sin and can lead to other sexual transgression. Avoid pornography at all costs. It is a poison that weakens your self-control, destroys your feelings of self-worth, and changes the way that you see others. It causes you to lose the guidance of the spirit and can damage your ability to have a normal relationship with others, especially your future spouse. It limits your ability to feel true love. Wow. Limits your ability to, uh, to feel true love. That's bad. If you encounter pornography, turn away from it immediately. If you are involved in pornography, cease now. Seek the help you need. Your parents and bishop can help you to take the steps necessary to repent and rid yourself of this destructive habit. Serious sins such as sexual transgression or the use of pornography need to be confessed to your bishop. So it's so serious you have to confess it to your bishop. Most kids, I think, will just lie to their bishop in those worthiness interviews. Most of, most of them are probably looking at porn and masturbating, and they just lie. If their bishop is concerned about it, they'll just lie to them. Some bishops are smart and are not concerned with porn or masturbation anymore because they know that it occurs to such a high percentage of their youth. Be completely honest with him. He will help you repent. And here is the cover of the 2011 For the Strength of Youth pamphlet. So even some of the women get in on the rhetoric. This is the Relief Society General Presidency. Uh, person Linda S. Reeves, 2014. Coming up to the modern time now in 2019. Reeves says that pornography is destructive, disturbing, vile, evil, and Satan's trap. But she doesn't get as much hellfire and brimstone as a typical man. All right, the Apostle Jeffrey R. Holland getting even more fire and brimstone. They're trying to outdo each other, these general authorities. This is the Utah Coalition Against Pornography Conference, March 2016. It's like these general authorities are dueling with each other to see who can come up with the most hellfire and, and brimstone statement on porn. Holland calls porn a crime, filth, an addiction, a battle, and a foe. Holland says that porn is a public health crisis. 
nonsense. He says it's a war. It is an infectious, fatal epidemic. It's like AIDS huh? or HIV. And it's a moral plague which maims the lives of our citizens. Porn rends the very moral fabric of our society. So it's amazing that our society is doing as well as it is. How is everything staying together? It destroys the family, the community, and the nation. Destroys the nation. Porn needs to be eradicated like an infectious disease. And here we have a picture of the Apostle Jeffrey R. Holland not looking too healthy. All right. Power to Overcome Pornography article on the church's website. I access this currently, uh, October 2019. Pornography is labeled as a plague, dreadful, an infection, spiritually fatal. That's bad. You can't come back from that. Evil, terrible, a stain, a perversion, harmful, serious. An, it's addicting and a degradation. Porn will damage marital relationships cause you to lose the spirit of Christ and forfeit the power of the priesthood. It makes you unworthy. Young women who dress immod immodestly, and I like this part again, young women who dress immodestly are magnifying this problem by becoming pornography. So the women who dress immodestly, they become pornography to some of the men who see them. What? Because they have their shoulders uncovered? Or they're wearing a miniskirt. All right. So we have all these horrible words depicting sex. Rhetoric depicting sex. It's just sex, people. But what's interesting is when you were married and having sex with your wife, all of these evils get turned around. All those words that were so evil describing people have, having sex get turned around and they mean the opposite when you get married, especially when you get married as the church tells you to in the temple. And sex becomes the most wonderful thing that you will ever experience. Well, how do you make that change in your mind? It was the most evil thing, now it's the most wonderful thing. It's hard for many Mormons on their honeymoon to magically change their minds or magically make the change in their minds some Mormon women can't make the mental adjustment. They can't make the mental adjustment and remain frigid throughout the marriage. And that is a miserable marriage. And on that note, we're going to wrap this up. And I thank you for watching the Mormons and Pornography video.